In this segment, we want to talk about Amdahl's Law. When we parallelize a program, we do so because we want to speed it up. We want to make it run faster than it does on a single processor. Speed up is defined as the time for serial execution divided by the time for parallel execution. In other words, if a program runs three times slower on a serial machine than it does on a parallel machine, the speed up is three. Serial execution, the numerator, is almost always going to be a larger number, a longer time, than the time for parallel execution. But just saying it's the time for serial execution versus the time for parallel execution doesn't really tell us what we need to know, because uh, we, we need to know which serial program is being compared with which parallel program. In order to get a true value for speed up, we want to compare the time for serial execution of the best serial program to the time for parallel execution of our program, because we want to compare our version with the best serial version that could be used. This is better because there are several things that can come into play to make a, any arbitrary serial version inappropriate for comparing with a parallel version. First of all, there's parallelization overhead when you create a parallel program. You need to separate the work so that the different processors can do it. A lot of times that involves distributing data around the system, and that takes time. That's time you don't need to spend if you're just doing a serial algorithm. So you wouldn't want to make the serial program go spread data around the machine and then execute with it there. It's just not a fair comparison for the serial algorithm. Uh, secondly, parallel programs may be organized to avoid data dependencies. Remember we've said that uh, you can go ahead and compute as soon as you know the, the values of the operands. Well, that's really important in a parallel program. You've got to have the values available when you compute. You've got to have a lot of values available in advance. And doing so may change your computation from the way you would do it on a serial program. That may make it slower for the serial program, but you wouldn't want to compare your parallel program against a um, serial program that's running with its hands tied behind its back. You'd want to compare it with a serial program that was a good serial program. Thirdly, it might be better not to use thread-safe libraries if you're just using serial execution. You don't need to worry about race conditions because you've only got one process. So why go to the extra trouble to secure a program against that? It would just slow down the serial algorithm. So again, you wouldn't want to compare a parallel algorithm with a serial algorithm that was slowed down with all of these uh, locks and unlocks when, they, when it didn't need it. And then lastly, bad programs sometimes have good speed up. Uh, programs that are not very well optimized for serial execution may be easy to divide into parts, but that's not a fair way to compare a parallel alg algorithm against a serial algorithm. Okay, if some parts of the program don't have much concurrency, we can't get good speed up on the whole program. Suppose the program is composed of a serial phase and a parallel phase. The whole program runs for a time unit, the serial phase, we will say, runs for time s, and the parallel phase runs for everything else, which is time 1 minus s. Then, regardless of how many processors are used, the execution time of the program will be at least s. Okay? It can't run less than the serial phase, regardless of how many processors you deploy on the, the parallel phase, so the execution time will be at least s. In that fact, means that the speed up can be no more than 1 over s. This is known as Amdahl's law. If the serial phase takes time s, you, which is relative to the total execution time of the program, you can't get a speed up of any more than 1 over s. Let's say that one quarter of the program's execution time is inherently serial so we can only parallelize the other three quarters of it. Well, if we made the time for the other three quarters of the program go to zero by, let's say, deploying thousands of processors on it so its time was completely negligible, we would still have a speed up of no more than 
4 because our serial phase takes one quarter of the time of the program uh, of, for the serial program. So regardless of how fast we do the parallel phase, we can't do it any more than four times as fast. Well, that seems like a rather dismal result. We can add processors and we don't do much good by adding them. Let's look at the definition of efficiency, which says how much it's worth us to add those extra processors. Efficiency is defined as speed up over number of processors. For example, if you get a speed up of two and you use 10,000 processors to get it, you're really wasting the processors. Their efficiency is very low. They're not doing much useful work. Let's take another look at computation time. Instead of saying that our program has a serial phase of time s and a parallel phase of time 1 minus s, we will say that the serial phase takes time 1 and the parallel phase takes time p if you run it on a single processor. Now if you run the program on a machine with n processors, the parallel phase will take p over n, the total time that it would take for the phase that's parallelizable, divided by the number of processors that you're running it in parallel on. Let's define alpha as the ratio of serial time to total execution time. Then alpha is the serial time, which is 1, divided by the parallel time, which is 1 plus p over n, the time it would take the parallel program or parallel processor to do the same work. And we can simplify that to n over n plus p. So for large numbers of processors n, alpha approaches 1. So efficiency must approach 0. The ratio of total execution time, serial time to total execution time, is 1 over pn, 1 over 1, plus, 1 over 1 plus p over n. And if n is large, that approaches 1 over 1. Um, and so efficiency must approach 0. Efficiency is the speed up over the number of processors. You're not getting any speed up. You're using an awful lot of processors. So efficiency approaches 0. So it does not help very much to add processors. But actually, that's a pessimistic way of looking at the situation. In 1988, John Gustafson from the University of Tennessee in Oak Ridge Labs noted that as computers become more powerful, people don't run the same old parallel programs. They run larger parallel programs. For example, if you're trying to forecast the weather, your accuracy is going to be limited by the number of data points you can take into account. But if your computer is faster, you can afford to use a finer grid, and then you get a better prediction. So you're not going to use your old parallel program on a new parallel machine a more precise algorithm or something like that so that you can take full advantage of your new machine. And that means that as n increases, p, which is the parallel phase of the program, tends to get bigger too. So the fraction of time 1 minus alpha does not necessarily shrink because p is getting bigger along with n. So efficiency remains reasonable. For a given problem size, you might have only a certain maximum speed up. But as you get a larger machine, you're going to work on larger problems. And that means the problem is scaled to match the processing power of the computer. So there's no clear maximum to scaled speed up. And Gustafson, by demonstrating the first program to have a speed up of 1,000, won the Gordon Bell Prize, which was a prize of, I think, a mil million dollars, which was established by the founder of Digital Equipment Corporation sometime many years earlier, I think in the 1960s, for the first program to reach a speed up of 1,000. And Gustafson's law states that any sufficiently large program can be efficiently parallelized.